good morning. We're feeding this morning. We need to fill up. We're heading straight to the Merinos first. Actually, no, we're heading to the grain. And then we're heading straight to the Merinos. So, not, not straight to the Merinos at all. We're here at the auger to fill up the feed bin. It actually has been working really well recently, like it's meant to, which is great. Just got to pull the tarp off. Oh, these oh, 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 damn it. Went too far. I'll fix it later. I'll fix it after I've filled it, which I'm going to have to do now because I managed to park it in the in the middle of the thing. I was gonna say, oh, nothing seems to be going wrong this morning. No, we're 10 minutes in. Fill this thing up. Then we can talk about today's action plan. Tarp is on, we are off. But first, complaint time. Need bloody theme music for it at this point. I don't know how many comments I've gotten now telling me that this is not a paddock. Collins Dictionary. Any area of fenced land. Fence, land, sheep, sheep paddock. In the US and Canada, it must be called a field and I'm assuming the UK and Europe. But here in Australia and New Zealand, this is a paddock. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. There seems to be some sort of like sound going on with the trailer. That looks fine, that looks fine. That spring's fine, that one's fine, that one's fine. I think it's just, oh, there's the ute. Bloody hell. Now, we do have a spare underneath. Do I have the tools to get it off though? That's my next bloody question. How the hell does that come off? I'll show you what I'm looking at. So this is what I'm looking at. Uh, must drop from the top. There are fucking eggs in here. I've got the jack, but I've got nothing to get it off the car with. Dad has been informed someone's bringing me tools. Help has arrived. You want some egg? Oh, oh yuck! Oh, the smell! Oh, I was trying to get them off. Maggots in them. <laughs> There's them and the maggot eggs. We're back now. I'm in the rav. I'm going to grab, got the keys. I'm just going to grab a better jack and the rattle gun. Jack, where is its little pole? That'll work. That'll work nicely. Do. Not fully charged, but. Yep. My bits and pieces have been acquired. We'll head down, jack the ute up, take wheel off, put next, put the stanky wheel on. We're back. What are you doing laying down on the job? Gotta, gotta pretend to at least enjoy the show. Um, we're gonna jack it up by this back frame, I think. Normally you'd go the axle, however, the axle's pretty low. So welcome to, welcome to the, you're stuck on the side of the road. This is how to change a tyre show. First step is you get your jack, you put it underneath your frame, normally underneath your axle. However, we're carrying a heavy load, so we're not doing that. If you, if you were stuck on the side of the road and watching this video to help yourself, I'm sorry. You've clicked on the wrong video. Normal cars or all cars will come with this as a standard jack. 
it'll hold your car. It's not going to hold a full ton of grain. So then what we do is we jack this fucker up. If we would have started this on a board and we would have been better already, but it is what it is. So this jack here is rated to lift 20,000 kilo, which will do the job of a small truck. <laughs> what we'll do is I might slide this one also in under here. Get this wheel up. Now that's, that'll be holding the grain trailer. I suppose I should show you what I'm doing in case you're ever in this situation. Basically, twist the jack up underneath the axle. I kind of want it to go between those two. Between those two. Let's steal. And we get up. Something we did not foresee was that. Damn it. Tires free. Up and up. I feel like that scene in Harry Potter with the broomstick. Beautiful. All right, tires now off the ground. Next thing, in the wild, you're gonna grab that and undo your wheels. <sighs> Attach it to there like that and you're going to lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. Put it like that and you're gonna go like this. And then you're gonna, you're gonna take them all off. However, we're a bit more advanced here. We're using a fucking rattle gun. Oh, that's not good. There we go. There we go. That's how you do it. Got clear off that Go. She's off. Very important. Don't lose your nuts. Right. Tires off. Put tire in your car. This is a bonus step for those of you who have maggots and eggs on your tires. Get a stick, and you're gonna need to poke the holes out. Get your new tire. Feel that bitch over. Slap her on. Line it up with your knobs. God damn it. Fucking chicken arms. We got it. Just put these nuts back on. Fuck, this stinks. Now, you're just doing back up with that thing. Again, I'm going to use the rattle gun. You should not use a rattle gun to do this. However, fight me. At this stage, I don't care. You should really only ever do them up hand tight, not rattle gun tight, but it is what it is. When you're doing nuts up, do them up one, two, three, four, five, six. Doesn't matter which order, just. So you get a good tighten, flatten on the wheel. I didn't do them up too much with the rattle gun, just enough to still need my little gadget. Give them a bit of a hand, handy, handy tighten. It's not the words I should have used. This tire won't be on for long. I'll go back under the car. Now that we're done with the tire, and the tire is give it a kick. That is on there. All right, this one here. We ended up lifting that and ended up being able to hold that trailer. I'm shocked, to be honest with you. I didn't give the little guy enough credit. I just went straight to the big guns. All right, hydraulic lift ones. You undo the little screw here and then 
Squish. Onto the ute. When releasing your jack off, you do so slowly. You do not want maybe pressure to go on your tire immediately. Uh, you go the opposite way as to what you went up. Actually, I'll hang that chain out of the way. You go the opposite way to what you went up to let the car back down. As we can see, go this way and it's going back down. Still smells like rotten eggs. Love it. He's done. You slipped out of my hole. Go back in there. I'll put the rav in the gate so someone doesn't nick our paddock bomb. And then we'll go feed the sheep. We're finally here. Hello, Marinos. Come over and get your dinner, lunch, breakfast. It's, it's almost it's dinner at this point, and we have a blockage. It's fine. That is to be expected. I will make sure my wheel is still tight. I shall do that first. How are you, wheel? Are you wheelie good? After you've driven for a bit, make sure your wheel is still on. She is looking bearing full because wheels have bearings. Unblock, unblock. Get back in the car, get back in the car. Have your food, Marinos, lambs, eat it. Mob number two. Ladies and lambs in the next paddock are making their way up to the gate for their dinner. Let's get it to them now. Why is that gate open? Slug, why didn't you do the gate up properly? That gate's open, so all the sheep that were in there are now in here. Not a massive deal. Um, they are the same sheep. Who's ready for some brunch? I'll open it up so then you can have it. Following up on the bushfire of last week, there's a number of reasons why I didn't call it in. I did reply to some of the comments asking about it. Um, here, it, here's my reply here for those of you who are interested. Point of it is I could have called in, but for those reasons, I didn't. Something else that's important that we need to do as people who live in country Australia is prepare for bushfires have a plan if you live in country Australia or a place where bushfires are you need a plan as to what you're going to do in the event of a fire are you going to leave are you going to stay you need to also prepare in the event a fire does come through if you've got long grass you need to cut it you need to have animals on it ideally because they eat it and then the grass becomes literal shit and then shit doesn't burn as well as um, slashed grass which is dry. Paddock number four. Then I think we need to grab some beans for the fat lambs. A lot of you who are international wanted me to show more of Australia's flora and fauna which that was pretty pretty clear with how with all the comments. <laughs> The fauna I can't guarantee because they're wild, but here's some of the flora we have. This is a gum tree. I think it's a red river gum by the looks of it. This is what it looks like. This is eucalyptus. Here are the leaves and they are the little gum nuts. So that's just one of the trees that grow in this area we're crutching now i know all of the farmer girlies have those stanley cups but this drink bottle here top tier this keeps all the shit out of the straw like inside of the drink bottle but put these ladies into the crutching pen so they can get done Right, they're in. You've got plenty of space. This is what we're putting on the lambs. It um, protects them from getting fly blown. So 
So what we do is we just put a spray on each of their bums. In spring, we need to give our ewes and lambs hygiene cuts to prevent fly strike. This is when flies lay eggs in their wool and then maggots hatch and begin to eat the sheep alive. The sheep then need to be caught, shorn and treated with spray. This is what it looks like with a sheep fly bone in the paddock. This is what a sheep looks like as you're treating it. And this is what it looks like when you're done. So this is what it looks like to crutch sheep manually by hand. You get them, you drag them out, and here's dad crutching them. While we're handling them, the sheep are drenched with wormer and vitamins. If their toes need to be done, they get a little touch up while they're in here too. We do the same as the lambs. However, we do go further down the leg, around the tail, and we also do their udder. The wool is then pulled off, which is worthless, so it becomes mulch so that's what crutching is and why we do it just wanted to show you this lamb look at the shoulders the sides the weight look at the front of this lamb this is a beautiful lamb turn the air conditioner down temporarily we're just going down now we're going to put beans in the back for the fat lambs cool stuff yeah Off to the fat lambs and we're gonna let Typo go for a a wade into the dam. She doesn't really swim, it's more of a get there and then stand there. She's not much of a beach girly. They are keen for their supper. Alright, little sluggy, it's time. Typo. Don't you go? Alright, splish splash. Splish splash. I know you want that close up. Is that it? Typo, come here. Come on, Sluggy. Come on, why are you looking so sad and depressed? We're at the next paddock of ewes now, aren't we slug? Over they come for their munchies. There they are eating their foods. Got these ladies next to do. Make sure they get a good munch. Sheep are eating. There are some little ducks there on the dam. That paddock over there, the brown one, with little specks of green. I don't think you can see it on the camera, but it's starting to get little specks of green. That's a rape paddock, and we grow that for the fat lambs. Fat lambs do really well on it, so after their wean, they'll be going over into that paddock there. There are my tracks from just before. It's the rape there. I'll show you what it looks like a bit closer. This is the rape paddock. This is what it looks like close up when it's little. And then just imagine this, but bigger and kind of looking like, like a silver beet sort of thing. There it is out there as well. It's also a good cover crop in summer to protect the dirt. Let's take those ewes and lammies back. Hopefully they've all paired up because I'm hoping to get them all the way back to that tree. Typo's not allowed to work in the paddock with the cows, says me, because she's a sensitive soul and gets chased by the cows. They all seem to be making good progress back to their little home. There we go. I'm just trying to bring these ewes in here for tomorrow to be done, but they're not cooperating very well. See, there's other sheep are over there. They're wanting to go down there. They just won't go in a cohesive group. These ones are just kind of dawdling along wherever the fuck they desire. She's got the right idea. What's wrong with you lot? She is keen for the salon. I mean, I don't blame her. If I 
had dingleberries like that, I'd want a, I'd want a bit of a spa treatment too. Probably a doctor as well. To be clear, she doesn't need a doctor. It's, it's she's just got worms. I was just making a joke. Calm down. For me saying about the drink bottle earlier and needing to not have a straw or like an exposed sucker thing, this is why. This is why. Come on, don't think, don't think, don't think, just run. Don't think, just run. Just run, run. Fantastic. Just run straight at that gate. Don't think, just run. Run, ladies. And gentle slug. Oh, Typo's a girl, by the way. For those of you who call her a he, Typo is a she. And into the yards. Beautiful work, ladies. Oh, she's even bringing him in there. What a good you. And Typo's in the trough. Good morning, members. Today we're going to the Melbourne Dog Lovers Show. Liam's in line for more free shit. Never done a whole video before, but here's all my shit.